So good morning. Today morning, we will start with some fundamentals. And by fundamentals, let's start with the first step for doing any vascular interventional procedure. And that is taking a puncture. So remember, before you take a puncture, you have to infiltrate that area with local anesthesia. Also remember this fact that when you infiltrate local anesthesia, it is not the deep tissues that are painful. It is actually the skin. So make sure your skin is actually intradermal. And as you inject the local, you should see the puree orange. If you don't see that, the patient will still have pain. I think the worst thing you can do to a patient when you start a procedure is inflicting pain. Now, once you have done that, then go either through and through the vessel to the posterior aspect and then pull back your needle, aspirate and inject or go by the sides of the vessel. But remember once again, the most painful part is the skin and not the muscle. So if you may give 7 ml of xylocaine, but if it's all in the muscle, the patient will still have pain. Now, as we know, it is Seldinger who described the technique, what we call the Seldinger's technique. Unfortunately, today it's hard to get one of the original needles of Seldinger. Now, Seldinger's original needle looked like this, but it had a talker inside it. The basic idea that he had is you feel the pulsation of the needle and you push it in, then you pull out the central talker, then gently pull out the needle till you get blood and then you pass the wire. His needles never had a bevel. So can you see there's a bevel in this needle? So his needle was rounded, but it was a pointed needle, pointed in all directions, which was the central trocker. And Seldinger would revolutionize interventional radiology because he showed us that you can percutaneously access a vessel and you don't have to do a cut down. Having said that, two decades later, this became the most popular needle. These are called the single puncture needles. So basically it has got a bevel, doesn't have a central cannula. And the primary aim is you feel the artery and then, you know, there are different ways, but I do it between two fingers. And then you push at the point, you feel a little pulsation and blood starts gushing out. Once blood comes out, so you kept it this way. It's very easy to shift it to this position. And you take your J-wire. These are the J-wires, as you know. The only use they have primarily today is for access. And you would introduce it into this. Okay. And see what happens. It will come out from the tip of the needle as a J. So it does not injure the vessel. Now, why are we saying you should not injure the vessel? Because when your needle tip is directed down, it is possible that you may be subintimal. And if you're subintimal, you'll cause a dissection. Now, these kind of wires, when they come out, they tend to go into the lumen because of the J shape. And then, of course, you can take it straight and then do the next step. And that is putting a sheet. Okay. So the first wire that we learned today is the single puncture wire. And the pink single puncture wires are large enough to take a classical 3-5 wire. Most of these procedures are not done under ultrasound guidance because they're used for large vessels. Now, for example, uh, you have a femoral artery, you would be using it. You can use it for the jugular vein for that matter. Uh, you can even use it for the carotid artery if you want to do a puncture, but we rarely do that. So the commonest artery we would use it is for the femoral artery and for the uh, jugular veins or even for a large vein where you want to put a, a 3 5 wire. Have you got that? Okay. Now having said that, we have another wire which is called the coated wires like the Terimo wire. Okay. So let me tell you why you should never use those or if you use it, you have to be very, very careful. Now, these wires have got a coating. Can you see that it's black? This coating is what makes it very lubricious. But the problem is this coating will peel off. So if you take this wire and you pass it through the guide wire, as long as they're aligned together, there is no problem. But if you are working at a steep angle, now for example, you are working on a steep angle, now the vessel is like this. 
so you understand and your thing is like this when you pull it it will peel this wire out actually if you see at the tip of the wire there will be some black powder that comes out which is peeling off the outer coating so remember that if you are not supposed to use a coated wire through a metal needle but you have to use it then on the skin you make it flat and try hard to keep it in line when you do it so we do do it and the problem is not inserting the wire it's pulling out the wire so once you take the wire to wherever you want then you can pull the needle out that's okay but try not to pull the wire out of these needles they can be messy because they peel this out right i mean straight nothing happens but when it takes this acute bend in a vessel only then this peeling will take place right just remember this point it's important so can we make this more atraumatic if you want to make it more atraumatic we have another one needle and these are the sheath needles so this is a gel co right the gel co comes in different colors they're very very sharp extremely good needles the only problem is you can't do a single wall puncture most of the time you can do it but sometimes you cannot so when you puncture this with this needle typically <coughs> you will go through the vessel then pull out the sheath and then slightly take it out but i want to show you a distinct advantage of this the advantage of this is this has got this component here can you see this this component allows air to come out but protects you from blood so one way it doesn't let allow blood to splatter around the place which is good especially if you are working with a patient with hepatitis c positive or a patient with hiv you don't want it so these kind of things help but even otherwise we have a device which actually can be connected to this like a check flow little valve that will also allow you to take a wire without any blood coming out huh? but this can be used for that it's very very sharp we rarely use it uh, today uh, and the reason we rarely use it is for one very very big disadvantage and what is the disadvantage now when i take this needle and i push it blood is coming out but the wire is not going for some reason and what are the commonest cause is touching the intima so now i can tilt this and move it down i can rotate it and it may come out of the intima and go into the main lumen or for that matter suppose i'm doing an anterograde puncture the needle has gone into the profunda i can still pull it a bit back still in the lumen and direct it this way have you got this idea so this is only possible because this is a stiff needle what can you do this with this it's impossible right you want to do this with a plastic cannula inside it's going to bend right so that becomes a very big challenge and so many times you'll have to redo the puncture to get the wire back inside so in our practice we hardly use this except for example the radial artery or something where the smaller cannula can be threaded into the renal artery uh, radial artery but other than that we kind of don't use these very very often it's very rare that we use it sometimes we use it for the brachial sometimes for the radial but by and large the commonest needle is actually these hmm? now from here let's move into another needle so the other needle is we have lp needles like this and where do we use it this comes in this is not really meant for vascular access but sometimes we still use it not to introduce a wire but sometimes just to access to inject some material inside now you got in several colors for example this one is a, a one that can take a 3 5 wire then we have got the pink uh, yellow ones which are 20 gauge that can take a 1 4 wire and sometimes we use it for accessing the liver for that matter or accessing say the spleen where you want to take this needle it's got a length of approximately i think uh, uh, 90 mm so that's 9 cm little longer than the smaller ones then of course we got the black ones which no wire goes through it is just useful if you want to inject something right so these are actually disposable lp needles and we use it for percutaneous access directly to inject most of the time not to wire but remember one thing the yellow one can take a one four wire easily can be used for an accessing a liver like i said the spleen or for directly injecting into a venous sac or any of these from here we go to another needle which is very very commonly used today it was not so popular one time back 
and these are called the micropuncture sets. The micropuncture uh, sets will take a 1 4 wire. Uh, for example, this is the wire that comes with this. Uh, these are not very good wires because they're kind of stiff. Can you see this? Both ends are stiff. Uh, see that? It is stiff. It's not, it can easily dissect. Remember this. So you have to be very gentle when you take this wire through. See that? Okay. Now, this is often done under ultrasound guidance for accessing the radial artery, accessing pediatric femoral artery. Uh, for example, you've got a six month child, eight month child, the femoral artery is only accessed by this. So the two common places is radial, you can use it for the brachial, see the length is not much. So that's a limitation. And because of that, we try to keep it for small size vessels, but definitely some places it's a mandatory must. One is the anterior and the posterior tibial artery, one is the pediatric femoral artery. The radial artery, it's up to you. You can even use a sheath needle, but this is a good needle. Some people use it even for carotid because of the safety. But remember in all of them, the vessel has to be pretty superficial. And we will do use this needle most of the time under ultrasound guidance. It is not really a genuine echo tip needle because uh, uh, it doesn't have a, a kind of a rough surface. Any needle can be made echo tip if you can take this component and make it rough so that ultrasound reflects out of it. So what do we do? We take a kind of a sandpaper and if you rub it over here, you can make it echogenic, but sometimes you can get echo tip needle. So remember this, this is the micro tip. It's got a very interesting arrow. Can you know why this arrow is given? This little arrow is to tell the direction of the bevel. Why is it important? When you're pushing the wire, the bevel should not face down. If it's facing down and you puncture this way, you can end up going into the intima. But if you're looking this way, it actually ends up going the lumen. And because it's a metal, you can direct it. The direction, you know, which is again very, very helpful. The only thing is these are not as sharp as the sheet needle. We got micropuncture sets that come with sheet needles which are very, very sharp. So sometimes in a very horizontal artery, we can still use a sheath needle like the radial and then or for the matter even the pediatric femoral. The advantage being that they are much more sharper. So sometimes you use it but this is one of the very popular needles we use for accessing the anterior tibial, the posterior tibial, the, the pediatric femorals, the brachials and rarely also the carotid arteries. Okay, have you got it? So this easily takes a 1-4 wire. I showed you the wire that goes with it but even a conventional 1-4 wire. For example, this is a conventional 1-4 wire called a whisper. You can see when this will go through this, right? So what I meant is you can use this also uh, to go through this and uh, see the wire exits and then after some time, so you can have enough length if you want support to do this. And remember, you should have matching dilators to go with this. A micropuncture set comes with its own set of dilators and those dilators are much smaller and they are much more finer because you can't have a shoulder between the wire and the sheath because soft tissue gets caught in okay so that is the uh, another important needle so let's coming back to again we started with this needle which is the one that takes the three far wire is the most popular needle we use it like i said commonly in the femoral artery we can also use it for the carotid or the jugular veins and we said the second most popular needle is this needle and this needle takes a 1-4 wire, we call it a micropuncture. We also highlighted the fact they use for small size vessel, pediatric femorals, anterior tibials, posterior tibial, the brachial and rarely the carotid. Most of the time this is done in the ultrasound guidance uh, because uh, they are small vessels and you get one chance. If you dissect the artery, you totally lose access. We also talked to you about the sheath needles. Uh, the needle that come with a sheath and I told you about the uh, problem of these needles that they're very sharp you can access a vessel but you can't direct it like a metal needle so we don't tend to use it very often okay now from here I would like to show you some speciality needles right now one of the speciality needles is a Chiba needle for example you have a lesion that is much deeper now where could that be for example, you have got a pseudo aneurysm and this pseudo aneurysm is actually uh, deep and then you want to take a needle, you can actually take a 20 gauge Shiba needle through which a 1-8 wire can easily go, right? 
Or for example, you got an AV malformation which has got a collector. And this common collector has all the arteries going into it and you have to access it to coil it. So you need a longer needle and this is a Shiva needle. This needle is uh, more than 15 centimeters in length, gives you enough access. Also, the Shiva needle comes in a much longer length also, which is very rarely used, but it is classically used for tips. Can you see the length? So basically, this takes a 1-4 wire and uh, <coughs> there are different wires, but remember to use a nitinol wire like the Nitrex, which is the safest. So this is again a Shiba needle. So remember, this is a very flexible needle. You can't direct it. So it goes through a metal cannula like what comes with uh, uh, any of the tip sets. And through that, you can take it if you have a, a, a dilator or the rubber di uh, dilator that comes with it. I mean, I'm sure when you open a tip set, you'll know. But this is very atraumatic. Other than that, this is also used in some interesting location. For example, you have got a patient with butt cherries and the patient has got a web and you are trying hard to cross the web. Now you can actually take this needle through a catheter which has got a an angle to direct it and you can pierce it. Now you know piercing the IVC with this, nothing will happen. And once you cross it and you have got into the opposite side, you can use it. So it's a pretty safe wire. I know there are some people also use this for chronic, chronic venous occlusions, trying to cross that last bit. The reason being these are very atraumatic and they are not at all dangerous. Even if you go outside the lumen, nothing happens. So remember, this is another interesting wire, a very, very long Shiva needle, which can be used to guide a wire through. Mm. Uh, I didn't talk about biopsies time primarily. This is not a wire for a needle for biopsy, but this can be used for the biopsy. The Shiba needle, which is about 20 centimeters long, right? Now, I also want to show you another interesting needle. This is called the Colipinto needle. The Colipinto needle is used for tips to puncture from the hepatic vein into the portal vein. But it has got an interesting concept where the bevel is in the reverse direction. Can you see this bevel? Normally the bevels are in the direction which is be anterior or in the curve. Now why do we have this against the curve? Because when you puncture it, this is how you puncture, the wire will automatically go into the main portal vein. That's the biggest advantage of this. If you have a classical bevel, it will look like this and the wire will go into the branches of the portal vein, right? So this is called a reverse bevel needle and you can see the reverse bevel by looking at the arrow. Basically the arrow shows the direction of the curve but the bevel is in opposite to the direction of the curve. Is the, is the arrow, can you see that? Okay, and this of course takes a 3-5 wire. So <coughs> that sort of covers all the wires that we, all the needles that we use in conventional practice, right? We talked about the commonest needle, the wires that are the workhorse wires, which are the single puncture wires, which we use with 3-5. And we talked the advantage of the tilt, the wires that for micro puncture, which takes a 1-4 or even a 1-8 wire at times, which the wires come with the set. We also talked in about the sheath needle, they are sharper, and how you would use these sheath needles uh, uh, to enter vessels, but the disadvantage we said is primarily, or this is the outer sheath, is that you can't really direct it. But we also said in a pediatric vessel or a radial artery, it can work very well. We talked about unusual wires like the Shiba needles, the extremely long Shiba needles, the Haskell sets which comes with the reverse bevel needles. And remember in all of them, test your wire outside unless and until it comes in a set. Now, for example, if you've got a ready-made set that comes to you like this, it comes with its own wire, okay? It comes with the wire. In that case, it doesn't matter. You don't have to test it. But when they are a needle alone and you're going to access it, make sure you test the wire, make sure that uh, uh, the dilator also is uh, complementary to the wire that you take and you can use it. So that's a little idea about different needles that we use and I hope that it's useful for you all and you must have all these needles in your lab because you don't know what is useful. Remember also, ideally micropuncture needles should be equipped. 
it helps you very much and i'm sure you know that the ideal transducer that we use is a linear transducer the shorter the better so you can get even a transducer that looks like a hockey stick where the frequency is really high goes up to 20 megahertz because it allows you to hold it small and go and do the puncture but if you don't have that even a conventional linear probe that you use for doing uh, standard <coughs> vascular studies is good enough provided the frequency is more than 10 megahertz so thank you this is a little bit on needles we'll go up to special wires in the next class